the Oklahoma Newsroom. This is an OU update. I'm Jenny Carlson here with OU beat writer Brooke Pryor. Brooke, OU's pro day for their draft eligible prospects. It's going to be on Wednesday morning down in Norman, close to the public, but from 11 to noon, Fox Sports Oklahoma will show some of Pro Day. We'll be there uh, to see how uh, these guys do. A lot of uh, a lot of really top-notch prospects, but a guy that will probably be uh, under the microscope most is Orlando Brown. We talked about him a week ago. You've written about him. You're going to have more about him in the Wednesday Oklahoman. But what are the stakes for Orlando Brown on Pro Day? Well, for Orlando Brown, the biggest thing right now is that he can try to, to rehabilitate his draft stock from what happened at the NFL Combine, which, if you forgot, it wasn't great. It was historically bad. He only had 14 reps, ran a really slow 40, didn't really wow anybody in the agility drills or in the positional drills. I mean, from all accounts, it was just a very, very bad performance. But the thing with Orlando Brown is some of this was somewhat expected. The numbers, maybe not so much. I think people thought he would get a lot closer to 20 reps on the bench press. But when you look at his tape, he's not the most athletic guy out there. Uh, he's not you know, going to wow you with his speed, with his agility. But what he is good at is playing left tackle, which is important because that's what he's trying to go do in the NFL. Uh, but I think to see the numbers that, that he put up was the biggest problem because now there's tangible evidence of just how unathletic he is and how he stacks up to some, to some of the other tackles in this draft and in previous drafts. Well, you know, I mean, I think a lot of us around here feel like his body of work on the field is really good and, and probably first round worthy. You know, is this a situation where right now he's looking at, you know, late second day, uh, you know, maybe third round or even into the third day of the NFL draft? I mean, is that where he is right now? Or, you know, can he rehabilitate to the point maybe he's a first round guy again with his performance at Pro Day? You know, I think that something dramatic would have to happen for him to be elevated back into the first round because the fact of the matter is for a lot of teams, there, there were some that, that weren't super high on him with, before the combine even started because they looked at his tape, because they didn't think that he was going to be a super athletic guy. You know, he didn't give up a sack, but there were still some things that they didn't really love. His footwork wasn't the best. He was a little slow on some things. So he was a guy that was already kind of a controversial. Either you loved him or you hated him going into the combine. Uh, and pro day, the other thing is, you know, the numbers at the combine were not good. He's only had about a week and a half to try to get better. And you know, how many more reps can you really help yourself with? How many, how many more can you reasonably improve to in that amount of time? How much faster can you really be on the 40? So he doesn't have a lot of time to try to make those big improvements and make that big jump. Uh, the other thing with his tape that was brought up a couple times is that he doesn't have a lot of quality tape in, in the quality of opponent. He has the Ohio State tape, that's huge. But other than that, the fronts that he faced as a player in the Big 12 were a lot smaller than what they're facing in the SEC in the Big 10. And that's a thing that a lot of Big 12 linemen are going through. Uh, Connor Williams, the offensive tackle from Texas, is going through the same type of scrutiny. So while Orlando Brown did have a good season, did what he needed to do in the conference, right now they're seeing that not, it doesn't necessarily stack up against some prospects that are coming out of bigger conferences. Well, you know, we've heard a lot about system quarterbacks in the, in the Big 12, and I know that's one of those things that Baker Mayfield is going to be, uh, you know, sort of trying to prove wrong. Are we sort of finding out that that may be trickling over to offensive linemen to some degree too? Yeah, absolutely. It's something that's trickling over to all offensive players in the Big 12. You know, these are guys that are putting up huge numbers. I mean, we saw D.D. Westbrook putting up big numbers to win the Bolitnikoff Trophy two years ago. Uh, Mark Andrews having good numbers this year. OU's running backs putting up big numbers. Baker Mayfield obviously doing big things. But a lot of that is a byproduct of the defense in the Big 12. And, you know, Lincoln Riley talks about wanting to recruit for him to have a bigger defensive front. Some of these other teams are trying to do the same thing, but right now it's just not on par with where some of these other conferences are, and therefore the numbers are a little bit skewed and a little bit inflated from maybe what some of the guys from the SEC and the Big Ten are able to do. All right, Pro Day, an interesting uh, day for a lot of these prospects, but it's going to be highly intriguing for Orlando Brown. What does he do? How does he maybe affect where he's going to go in the NFL draft? We'll be there. We'll have all your coverage, so be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.